Okay, thank you for uh, inviting me to this um, to this very nice event. I am sorry that I cannot be there uh, in person, but I'm very happy to uh, to share with you some of my results and some of my my contributions and my take on the role of artificial intelligence in achieving the sustainable development goals. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa. I'm an associate professor at uh, KTH in Stockholm, and um, I am in the Department of Engineering Mechanics and my research is funded, among others, by an ERC grant. So I'm going to uh, explain some of the um, results that we got in a, in a research article. We published that now two years ago in Nature Communications, uh, where we had the main question of assessing whether there is a public evidence of AI acting as an enabler or an inhibitor of the um, targets from the Sustainable Development Goals. So we looked in detail at the 169 targets uh, to try to really assess this uh, connection between artificial intelligence and each of those targets. Uh, as uh, everyone in the audience uh, hopefully knows, uh, the SDGs is the agenda of the United Nations towards sustainability uh, for 2030. Uh, in order to be able to answer this question, we need uh, a quite multidisciplinary team yeah, because uh, uh, this, uh, the topics that are covered in the SDGs span from a very wide range of areas and therefore we really uh, had to uh, obtain feedback from a very numerous range of areas. So this, um, uh, this team uh, consisted of 10 different people yeah, from all continents with uh, very different backgrounds, including applied machine learning, more theoretical machine learning, uh, interaction design, uh, ethics, uh, legal implications, economical implications, uh, experts in biology, uh, and also experts in energy systems and sustainability. So with this team, we use uh, what is called an expert elicitation process to be able to progressively discuss and converge towards our uh, unified view on the effect of AI on all these um, uh, targets of the, of the Sustainable Development Goals framework. So the idea is that we first took the 17 SDGs, we divided them into three main categories, including the society, the economy, and the environment. And we wanted to uh, do this, which is a quite a standard classification, in order to be able to uh, basically look holistically at the effect of AI on these three main areas. So we first uh, look at this uh, separation. And what we found is that uh, actually 79% of the SDG targets can be positively affected by AI, which is a quite promising result. Uh, and 35% of the targets can see their uh, fulfillment compromise from the development of AI technology, which is in principle a quite positive message. This is a quite encouraging result. Uh, however, uh, it's important to highlight that uh, even if the message is mostly positive, even one target uh, with a negative uh, effect of AI can significantly, um, well, in a way, um, mask and uh, counteract all the positive effects that we can see on the other side. So even if the negatives are less numerous, we need to be aware of them and we need to act on them. If we look at the three different uh, areas that I mentioned before, the environment uh, seems to be the, the, the area with the most positive uh, effect and the society exhibits quite some negative effects that we'll try to also discuss a bit more in the next, uh, in the next slides. So we can actually zoom in and go to each of the SDGs individually. On the left, we can see the positive effects of AI on each of the SDGs uh, one by one. And these numbers indicate the percentage of targets that are positively affected by AI. And on the right, we see the negative effects. So once again, we go to each of the SDGs and these numbers indicate the percentage of targets within that SDG with a negative effect of AI. What you can also see is that I'm showing you two different lines, one in a lighter color and one in a darker color. The lines in the, dark, in the lighter color are obtained when there is at least one reference indicating a positive or a negative connection. Whereas the lines, with the lines with the darker color are obtained when we take into account the strength of the evidence. And the strength of the evidence implies uh, how robust is the technique that is being used, how easy to generalize and how uh, basically how convincing is the uh, type of methodology and argumentation that is presented in, uh, in these references. So uh, obviously the darker color is uh, smaller or equal than the lighter one for each of the, of the uh, SDGs because we're using a weighting factor that takes into account that strength of the evidence. And what we see is that actually 
in the environment and the society, the positive effects are quite robust. Now we can compare the darker and the light color. If there is a big reduction, uh, when we look at the darker color, that means that the evidence was based on uh, references that were not so robust. And actually, the negative effects of AI on the environment and the society are research gaps. Uh, they are uh, There is a quite pronounced decrease of the percentage of um, targets being affected when we take into account the strength of the evidence. And that is quite interesting as well, is that the positive effects of AI on the SDGs related to the economy, which are on this section over here, those ones uh, also are based on um, well research topics or research um, uh, studies that are not so robust. So there is a research gap on the positive effect of AI on the economy. So there is quite some potential also to develop and to try to understand things a bit better in the context of this. So that's important. That's something that we also want to highlight in quite some uh, in quite some uh, detail. Uh, the study, which you can see the reference uh, here again in Nature Communications, contains a very detailed uh, Excel file in the supplementary materials where for each of the targets, we are showing all the references that were used to make the uh, assessment or a positive or a negative effect. So you can see all the supplementary material there, and hopefully um, you can get also quite some examples of these interactions that I'm talking about. Okay. Now, if we look at some uh, some examples, you no, know, if we look one by one to the targets, I mean, we can see, and here I'm going to highlight some of them, but of course, you can go to the paper to really see in detail all the connections that we establish. Uh, AI can have a quite positive effect on um, clean energy, on sustainable cities, and in general, on climate. You no, know, that's SDG 13. So almost all the targets of all these SDGs are positively affected by AI. And this is important because I will get back to that uh, later in this presentation, but for example, cities are uh, areas with very high um, threat for the health of the, of the citizens uh, and therefore being able to use AI to uh, develop more sustainable uh, living environments in cities is a quite, quite promising uh, area. On the other hand, there is also quite uh, some negative effects. No? If we look at uh, AI impacting clean energy and SDGs uh, related to with uh, climate action and climate change, what we see is that AI uh, well, it has a very, very strong energy consumption. No? The electricity necessary to uh, drive the HPC centers where these models are trained, they're consuming massive amounts of electricity. At the moment, the electricity associated with information and communication technologies is just 1% of the total. But in 10 years, this is expected to go up to 20%, which is huge, right? It's a massive uh, fraction. So uh, we can talk about AI for sustainability, but we should also talk about the, well, the real possibility of the sustainability of AI itself. And for that, we need to be aware of um, well, techniques to be able to train more efficient models, use transfer learning, use more efficient architectures that are uh, suited to the problem that we're looking at and embedding in our models all the physical and expert knowledge that we have about our system. Otherwise, we are just wasting resources and uh, contributing towards the negative effects of uh, AI in the context of climate. So this is about the potential. And of course, there are many more examples for all the SDGs that you can find in our paper. Uh, what I also wanted to highlight is that all these interactions uh, happen uh, in the context of three main agents, the technology, the individuals, and the governments. So the technology, uh, and in this figure, um, the thickness of the arrows indicates the speed of change. Uh, the technology is obviously advancing very fast, imposing new needs and new requirements from the individuals who are lagging a bit behind the technology, and clearly the governments are lagging be significantly far behind uh, both technology and individuals. So the, in the, the governments need to react to technology and individuals in the context of uh, regulatory um, frameworks and, uh, and standards for, uh, for regulation. So this is something that uh, is happening and has been happening for a while, and all of it is happening in the context of the environment and the planetary boundaries. So there is uh, an interaction with the environment in terms of resources, but also in terms of uh, climate impact that is quite, uh, quite significant. So this is quite important to be able to understand the dynamics that is taking place in all these interactions. And now we can focus a little bit on the example of the cities, SDG 11 for sustainable cities with a big impact on SDG 13 for climate action. So as I was mentioning before, uh, 
exposure to high levels of pollution is causing a, a big uh, impact on the health of the citizens. 800,000 people die in Europe every year only because of the exposure to um, pollution levels that are too high. And there is quite some potential of AI to tackle some of these challenges. Uh, one example is that of uh, being able to more accurately and robustly measure the pollution levels in cities. So this is an example combining artificial intelligence and simulation of how in a city you can use sparse measurements to be able to reconstruct the three-dimensional flow velocity and the three-dimensional uh, fields of concentration pollutants. And this is uh, the, what you can see here at the bottom are very, very well resolved simulations, very detailed flow simulations in simplified environments with the buildings. You can find um, some of that work for the city simulations in the world by Torres and others in energies last year and Lafpita and others in physics of fluids this year in 2022. So you can really see the level of detail that we can obtain in our simulations. And more importantly, how we can go from these sparse measurements that you can see here to a dense representation of the flow velocity and the pollution levels. So being able to characterize this flow in the complex uh, urban environments and having the possibility of repro reproducing from sparse measurements the flow and the pollutant concentration gives us a big opportunity for more um, sustainable solutions in the, cost, in the context of urban environments. Uh, there are some more detailed frameworks to make these predictions, and this includes uh, using uh, uh, recurrent neural networks, uh, but also transformers for temporal uh, dependencies and prediction of temporal dynamics. Spatial features can be predicted very effectively with convolutional neural networks, but also with transformers applied to computer vision or other tools such as GANs. Uh, and, and what you can see here on the right is the level of detail of our simulations. So we can actually try to learn the dependency of our flow structures on geometrical parameters of our city, like the separation between the obstacles, which as you can see has a huge impact on the flow structures and the physical mechanisms in the city. So combining both the deep learning architectures and the very detailed flow simulations, we can actually uh, be able to reconstruct these features with quite some detail uh, with the hope that we can actually use this information to develop more sustainable solutions in cities. So that's a little bit the idea, that's a little bit the context. And you can see that it's possible to use some of these architectures. What I'm showing you here is um, a generative adversarial network. And so this is a neural network that is widely used for super resolution applications. And we can see how we can use quite coarse inputs to predict very finely resolved features in the flow. To give you an idea, this is the reference um, wall shear stress fluctuations. On the top, what I'm making is very coarse inputs and at the bottom, you can actually see the reconstruction. So we can get with GANs very accurate reconstructions from very sparse inputs, which is basically the key to being able to make this uh, reconstruction of the flow and of the pollutants in the context of an urban map. This work using GANs for super resolution, for reconstructing the features from very sparse measurements can be uh, documented. You can see all the details in the work by Güemes and others in Physics of Fluids also published last year. So you can see all the details there, okay? And one last note before closing, I want to also mention interpretability. I mean, mostly deep learning models, which are very widely used in a wide range of applications, uh, they are black boxes. Uh, you cannot establish a close connection between the input and the output. Uh, and uh, there is some work on being able to open the black box. No? There is the work of uh, Kramer and other uh, from Princeton. And we have some recent work also in nature machine intelligence, Binoes and Sigma Sec, where we actually show how through symbolic regression, it's in principle possible to um, connect the inputs and the outputs of our model with an equation, an equation that you can easily interpret and that you can easily work with. There is some uh, interesting work on um, satellite imaging for detecting areas of poverty. Yeah? So you basically have your pictures, you have your feature maps from the CNN, from the Convolutional Neural Network, and a prediction of poverty. What we can do with this interpretability framework is that we can come up with an equation eh, which connects the predicted consumption in dollars per capita and per day as a function of the inputs, which can be the amount of roads in the picture, the distance to the cities, the amount of nightlife uh, 
basically intensity, yeah? so how much light you can see in the in the darkness in the night, and uh, in a way trying to make that mapping so that we can have a model that is both interpretable and that can achieve the accuracy of the original deep learning model. Uh, this way, we can also understand the dynamics of these changes towards, for example, having development of poverty and anticipate those dynamics in such a way that we can coordinate better international actions. So there is quite some potential in this interpretability of deep learning models. And I believe this is an essential requirement if we're going to deploy this technology for um, sustainability and for applications with impacts in our, in our societies. So with that, I would like to summarize my, my conclusions. Uh, we have shown positive and negative effects of AI, but overall the message is that of um, an informed optimism. Yeah, so there is quite some potential that we can exploit, but we need to also be aware of the negative um, effects and also the need of developing adequate standards for uh, transparency, safety, and ethics in the context of AI technology. And this is also quite essential. So I will um, be very happy to receive your questions and comments. Uh, you can see my email down here, my, the web of my lab, also my social media information. So feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to discuss new ideas, to discuss collaborations, or if you have any question or curiosity about my work, I'm also very happy to discuss that. So thank you very much. And uh, I will be happy to take your questions.